Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco. Dish out on movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. It's just Marco here once again, and I am here today to rank all the finales of American Horror Story seasons. For starters, finales have started to really suck nowadays. Like, I've noticed that ever since they started calling fans toxic for criticizing shows, um, ever since then, and ever since, like, putting all these agendas into movies and TV shows, they don't really feel the pressure anymore to put out quality entertainment and to put out, like, something that's worth being a finale. You know, like, I don't even know what finale means anymore because nowadays there's episodes that come before the finale that are more like a finale than the actual finale. And to me, like, doing a finale is the easiest thing to do because it's like all you have to do is conclude all the stuff that you set up throughout the season and then uh, maybe a little teaser for next season. But nowadays, all they do is just set up for the next season. They used to have this term, too. I can't remember what the term is or was because I don't really hear it anymore. Sorry, you guys can hear I'm still... Hashtag still sick with allergy crap. Um... But they used to, they came up with this term where there's an episode that comes before a finale, and it's supposed to be more climactic than the actual finale, which doesn't make any sense at all because the finale is the finale is the finale. The, f the finale is supposed to leave you feeling full for a year until the next season comes out. You know, that's, that's like the whole purpose of a finale. That's why Hannibal... Even though Hannibal in the third season became trash, they were really good at doing finales because they even said, like, we don't know if our show's going to get renewed, so we're going to make every season finale feel like a series finale to where it actually could be. And you could leave off there and it would be like, wow, that was a great ending. And so every single season had a really, really impactful climactic finale and it is the exact opposite for American Horror Story you know American Horror Story they have some of the worst finales ever made and they have always had some of the worst finales all the way back to season one and I think that it is one of the primary flaws of the show because when you think about horror stories a lot of the best horror stories have some of the best endings. You think about what are the top horror movies for like the majority of people on planet Earth? Halloween. Well, how does Halloween end? Does Halloween have a bad ending? No. Uh, it ends with Michael Myers gets, gets away and then you see like the shots of all the different environments while you hear Michael Myers is breathing and it's really creepy because he could be anywhere and he's going to get you. That was a great ending. You think about, uh, I don't know, Scr uh, no, not Scr Scream had a good ending, but I mean it was, a, it was more of like a traditional kind of movie ending. Okay, like uh, The Shining. You think about The Shining where uh, Jack freezes to death and you see him and you see he's frozen in the maze. And then you see the picture at the end where now he's somehow in the picture. And it turned out he was always there in the hotel, even in the past. And there's that whole thing with the note. Uh, you think about, like, Sleepaway Camp. She's a boy! <laughs> you know, I mean, horror movies have some of the best endings ever. And so how could you really have a great horror TV show if every single season has a terrible shitty finale where things aren't resolved there's a lot of plot holes a lot of things are just kind of subverted on purpose you know like oh you think that's gonna happen no it's not ha 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 uh very repetitive you know with the whole crybaby thing where 
you know, Sarah Paulson, every single finale with her is like her just like humiliating the male villain on television, uh, essentially, you know, like very, very terrible finale. So you're going to, you're going to, uh, probably come off this video with the impression that I like to complain about everything because, there is only one finale out of all of this series that I actually think is a good finale. And even then, I still feel like, you know what, <laughs> there's better finales out there. And so anyways, let's get started. I've gone on a little finale rant, <laughs> rant page. The 12th worst finale in American Horror Story is American Horror Story Season 12, Delicate. This was actually pretty close for me. Uh, it was either this or the other one that I'll talk about <laughs> after this, but the thing that put it over the edge was Kim Kardashian. Um, you know, this episode, it basically revealed what the whole season was about. It was all about hating men, uh, which is something that, you know, they like to do nowadays in movies and TV. They'll just make a whole TV show for the purpose of hating on men. And uh, it's bad enough, you know, they took this woman's book, Delicate Condition, and I don't know the name of the author, unfortunately, but they took this woman's book and they completely bastardized it and turned it into this anti-male hate show. And it's really funny because in the episode they have this segregation Hollywood propaganda where Emma Roberts jokes and says, I'm going to go audition for a feminist horror film, and it's written by a man. Ew. And then Kim Kardashian says, when are they going to let us tell our stories? And it's like, well, we just let you tell your quote-unquote story, and you took another woman's story, and you completely ruined it, and you turned it into shit. And so, like, this is probably why... You, you're, quote-unquote, not allowed to tell your own stories, which is just a bunch of bullshit anyway. Because also, you think about, like, the horror movie that she auditioned for was probably made with the help of the witches on the show. So that's another thing, is, like, Kim Kardashian is complaining about men when she's the one who probably put that guy in the position to make that movie. So it's just really, really bizarre. Um, the episode starts off with Emma Roberts, and she's making fun of this poor, lonely woman at the support group meeting. She's crying and crying about how she wants to have children and men aren't interested in her. And the, the main character of our season, the person that we're supposed to sympathize with, is making fun of her and, uh, you know, with Kim Kardashian. And another thing is just the fact that, you know, anything with Kim Kardashian in it is automatically trash. You know, she's a terrible actress. She's a terrible person. She poisons everything that she's a part of. Uh, you know, and just the fact that, like, you guys realize that because of this show, the people who made this show, they opened up the Pandora's box for Kim Kardashian to just be allowed to, to start poisoning Hollywood. And so now she's going to be in a movie, she's going to be in a show where she plays a divorce lawyer, and she's going to be in some sort of Netflix show that she's co-producing with Emma Roberts. So this show was also like, oh, you, you guys want to see this bitch start to uh, infiltrate Hollywood and ruin everything like all the other modern actors do? Well, uh, here you go. Because, uh, you know, even though everyone hated it and everyone disliked it, we're still going to push her anyway. Because that's the modern Hollywood way. Is that even though the audience say says that the show is trash or the person is trash, we're going to shove them down your throat anyway. And I have a perfect example. This is non-American Horror Story related, but I thought it was really hilarious. So, uh... The official Goosebumps page, they actually posted, like, a little meme uh, using uh, pictures from the shitty show from last year. And I actually uh, commented and said, 
This show was like the worst show ever. Why would the official Goosebumps page even be acknowledging this shitty show? And it's really funny because there was this guy who replied and he said, watch the show as if I haven't watched the show and I'm just saying that to hate on it. And then another person said that it was a piece of shit. And guess what he said to them? Why don't you watch the show? Like, it's just, it's so bizarre. Like, it's like criticism is completely, like, they, they don't even care about criticism anymore. It's like, uh, you know, we'll just do what we want to do. And, you know, if you don't like it, then who cares? You know, we, we just want to fail and we want to make shitty TV and movies because we just, we don't care anymore because, you know, we live in our little Hollywood bubble and we don't really care what the audience thinks. And, you know, well, we'll see where that gets you. That's for damn sure. Uh, it's going to get you to where American Horror Story is now. So, in this episode, too, it's very, very short. It's another shortened, rushed finale where they it's only, like, 30 minutes long instead of 45 to 50 minutes. That's another thing. Is like, oh, we have to rush everything to an end because we're lazy asses. And we can't handle making a normal length uh, show. And finally, the main villain of the show, <laughs> she's like thousands of years old. And she's defeated in the most absurd way possible. And it's just so silly. It's so ridiculous. There's a bunch of plot holes. Like there's characters that, you know, we don't even know what happens to them. Uh, it's just very, very bizarre and a terrible, terrible finale. And then it just cuts off at the end and there's no actual ending. Uh, so yeah, this is definitely the worst finale of the series. Number 11 is American Horror Story Season 10, Death Valley. Ugh. Now, <laughs> I can hardly remember this finale... Because all that I can remember was that while the episodes were coming out, and, you know, that story was only, like, four episodes long. Uh, they were rushing everything. Everything sucked. The story was trash. The main characters were really unlikable. And so they were already on, off on a bad foot in the finale because if, if you don't like the main characters and you're not interested in them, then that's a terrible foundation. And so... You're not going to have a good finale anyways because nobody's going to be invested at that point. It's just like with Goosebumps. You know, there was no one to care about in that show. So, you know, who cared about the finale? Uh, the finale was terrible too, that finale. And uh, this one, I can barely remember. Like, I, it, it's just, it just sucked. It just sucked really badly. Nothing was good about it. We were actually coming up with ideas that were better than what was on screen. Like, uh, we were saying that, like, okay, so you had these couple of characters who were trapped in Area 51, and they were pregnant with alien babies. And I thought it would have been really cool, and it would have been kind of like a neat horror twist, if, uh, because in the, in the previous episode to the finale... The guy was about to give birth on the set of the moon landing, and I thought, wouldn't it be amazing if the alien baby jumped out and, like, started killing everyone in Area 51, and then it ended up making it so that those guys could escape? That would have been really, really cool. Uh, and then we were also saying, you know, Evan Peters' character from Asylum, he was abducted by aliens... And we never found out what happened to him. And so I thought, you know, in the finale of this alien story, wouldn't it be cool if he showed up for like five minutes and we see what happens to him? Like, nope, can't do that. We have to have uh, Mamie Eisenhower and her story of, uh, I don't even know. <laughs> it's just fucking shit is what it was. So number 10 is American Horror Story Season 10, Red Tide. This story 
was the biggest fumble in the history of the show because I think that the whole season should have been red tide. I think that this story was so good, potentially, that it should have filled up an entire season. There were so many things you could have done. Uh, the, the, the characters were great at first, and the villains were pretty damn good, too. Uh, and, and But they just they ruined it because they rushed it to an end so that they could get to their shitty alien story. And uh, the finale was the ultimate disappointment, uh, though. It was what you called a pandemic finale, where it was also a short finale. They rushed it to an end. The main characters, they all die right off the bat, and the only characters left are uh, the little girl, who's extremely unlikable, and then uh, Ursula, the worst character on the show, and the chemist. And it's like, I really did not want to spend the finale with these terrible characters. And it was it was something that was so bad to where I couldn't have even predicted how bad this finale would be. Because it was so anticlimactic, the way that they defeated the main villains right off the bat, and then the rest of the finale is just Alma struggling to be perfect. It's, it's just so stupid. And then you have uh, the police, and there's some anti-police BLM messaging in there in this uh, horror finale where, like, the police have all taken the pills and they're, none of them are talented or something. It's just really, really weird. Really, really weird finale to this otherwise uh, potentially great story. And there's just so many other things. Like, I, I could go on and on and on. I mean, this finale was so bad, it made me angry. I mean, I, I hardly get really genuinely angry on this channel. But Red Tide and that shitty finale made me angry. Uh, so, fuck that. Number nine is American Horror Story Season 3, Coven. This is probably the most overrated season of the series. It's basically all held together by these great performances that, you know, if you didn't have these performances, then people would actually acknowledge how trash this season is. And so here's the thing. In the finale of a show, <laughs> you're looking forward to seeing these main characters go through some sort of a climactic event, have to defeat some sort of a big boss, have to do something impactful. You think about, like, uh, what's a good finale? I have such trouble thinking about good finales now because all, all of them now are trash. Uh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> I can't, can't even think of one. Like, I know Hannibal, but, like, already talked about Hannibal. Well, I guess Hell on Wheels Season 2, that finale was a masterpiece, you know, and in that episode, most of the episode, the screen time, is between the main three characters, Colin, the main hero of the show, the Swede, the main villain of the show, and then the love interest, uh, Lily. That finale is amazing. And it's because you get to see the main characters collide with each other in a very interesting way, a very tragic way, and dramatic way. And in American Horror Story Coven, what they decided to do was get rid of all the main characters that you actually liked in the show before the finale even happened. So Jessica Lange's character, Fiona, she's not in the finale uh, Kathy Bates's character, Delphine, uh, she is not in the finale. Uh, Angela Bassett's character, she's not in the finale. Those three actresses are literally the only reason to like season three at all. And none of them are there in the finale to do anything. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, that's, that's terrible. That you just, they completely shot themselves in the foot with that. 
And then the actual finale is just like, oh, let's do the Seven Wonders test, as if anyone cares about that. And it's basically like the ultimate subversion, where it turns out that uh, Crybaby will become the Supreme. It's so stupid and dumb, you know, like, why would you want to have someone be the Supreme who's like the ultimate nitwit, you know, this woman who... Uh, blinded herself on purpose so that she could have psychic visions. I mean, what a dumb biatch of a character. I mean, why would you want that person to be the Supreme? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just so bad. And it's just, like, obvious that, like, you know, oh, we, we don't really care about the character being the Supreme. We care about Sarah Paulson being the Supreme, because all of the fanboys are going to go, yay, it's Sarah Paulson, she's the greatest, and yay, she's the Supreme, yeah. It's not really about the character and about the rules that the show set up, and there was another thing, too, of, like, she wouldn't have been allowed to compete in the first place if they were really sticking to their rules. And you have the fact that in the finale, they accepted that traitor back into the group, uh, Queenie, you know, after she totally betrayed them and she started to become the psychopathic girl going around killing people for Angela Bassett, uh, they just accepted her with open arms. Look where that got them with her. Like, that really didn't help them very much. She got stuck in the hotel because she's an idiot. And then they brought her back and she still sucked and she still failed to do anything important on the show. So, yeah, Coven is trash. It's so overrated, it's not even funny. Now, let's see. Number eight is American Horror Story Season 2, Asylum. <laughs> this finale, it's another one where they got rid of the interesting characters, like they got rid of Evan Peters. I don't even think he was in the finale, that uh, Kit character. So he's not in the finale. It's basically all centered around this dull, depressing, dark story where the worst character in the history of the show, Lana Winters, or one of the worst characters, she treats her son like trash and she abandons him because uh, she's mad that she had to have him in the first place. And so then it, it basically turned her son into a, a, a killer uh, because of her uh, abuse, her child abuse, uh, that she refuses to take any responsibility for. And so then he confronts her on live TV. And it was actually a, a pretty cool moment because I thought it would be kind of like satisfying to see him kill her and then he gets killed or something. Uh, but instead, they have this, like, cringeworthy, like, humiliation thing where she just does this, like, speech to him, and then she gets to kill him or whatever, and then it's just, like, so cringeworthy, though, of, like, they did have these characters collide, these main characters, but it was so unsatisfying, like, they, it's another thing where, like, they started off the episode establishing that this woman abused her child and then you're supposed to feel sorry for her and you're supposed to root for her against him and it's like no like he is a terrible serial killer but like I'm much more on his side than hers after she abused him like that and abandoned him uh so it was just a really letdown of a finale I mean uh, Asylum is is one of the best seasons of the show and hardly anything happened in that finale. It was a, a big letdown. So. Number eight is Murder House. American Horror Story Season 1. Ew. Sorry, I just had a hair. Ew. American Horror Story Season 1... <laughs> It, it it was pretty good. It was a solid start to the show. There were some problems that I had, and all of them came to a head in the finale 
because the finale was basically just one letdown after the other. I thought, well, they they had a great setup for a finale where Ben had to redeem himself and he had to escape the house with the child, uh, with the little baby, and he had to save him. And uh, I thought that actually seems like it could be a really good finale, how he would be able to escape the murder house, redeem himself, and start a new life with uh, the baby or something. But no, instead of that, he gets killed right off the bat uh, by the the woman that he cheated with, and she doesn't even show up in Apocalypse, by the way, which was trash. And uh, it's just funny because, like, this finale is so bad. It is just one disappointment after the other, but it is so bad that they literally had to redo this finale in American Horror Story Apocalypse. So there is an episode in Apocalypse that I'm sure you're all aware of, Return to Murder House. And that episode literally like redeems this entire finale because it, it's like the writers admitting that they didn't even do a good finale and so they have to like make up for it and do like a redo of the finale in Apocalypse. And it's funny because the that episode in Apocalypse is is rated as the best episode of the series. And it's like, yeah, you see, that's what happens when you do a good finale and when you really do a good job at concluding stories instead of just doing disappointing things for the sake of it and then, like, just not resolving anything and having everything be, like, a big letdown. Because that's what they like to do. I've noticed that American Horror Story, they get off on being complete letdowns to the audience. Especially now, putting Kim Kardashian in a season. Okay. Number seven is American Horror Story, season six, Roanoke. Ugh. Ugh. This finale was like a mishmash of trash. You know, it was like they were struggling with, you know, what do we do now that we've killed all the characters and that there's nothing left to do? First off, they started off the episode with a Q&A with characters that have all died, and that felt like a desperate last-minute attempt to like, you know, oh, look, there are the characters that you actually like. Look, there's Kathy Bates. Instead of keeping her character alive, we have to do this thing where we show video footage that was uh, from before the modern day now. Uh, So before, like, the finale happened, you know, like, we have to go back in time because all the stuff that's happening in current time is complete garbage. And so this plot centers around... uh, the main woman, I can't remember her name. Uh, she's a good actress, but her character sucked. Very unlikable. And so this this is another finale where the whole episode is centered around this character that you do not like at all. Because she she's evil. I mean, she got possessed by uh, the witch in the woods. She was killing people. She turned insane. And uh, I don't know why you're supposed to like her at all. And, and the whole thing of her in court was bad, uh, and it was very disappointing that she got off on both trials. That never would have happened in real life, that's for damn sure. Uh, but then they do a repeat of season two, where she gets on national television with Crybaby, and then a bad guy comes onto the show to confront uh, her, not Crybaby, and then Crybaby does the same thing where she does her little humiliation speech to the guy on TV. And then she gets to kill him or, or whatever. I can't even remember what happened. And so that was another thing of like, oh, we, we, we literally don't know what to do. So we're just going to copy and paste what we did in season two in the finale. 
and people are going to like it because it's Sarah Paulson, and she's uh, humiliating this this uh, evil man. You know, it's like it's she just does the same old thing every single season of the show, practically. And then the whole show ends with uh, the main woman sacrifices herself for her stupid brat daughter who who wants to protect this ghost girl in Roanoke. This ghost girl who we never saw the entire season except for like five minutes in the season. So like the whole finale is built around this unlikable character sacrificing herself for another unlikable character so that another character that we don't even know gets to be safe in the spirit world. I mean, is that just the dumbest shit you've ever heard? Ever? Like, yeah. Number six is American Horror Story New York City. Ugh. Ugh. This finale was a huge Debbie Downer. It was basically a music video uh, in the second half. But in the first half, it started off like they potentially had a good idea that they could have gone with, where they had this rich, evil guy character the whole season. And the first half was almost like a Christmas carol, where they were taking that guy around and showing him the effects of what he's done and why he was such a terrible person in the current life as he is sick with AIDS. And I thought they could have done something really positive here and they could have had it where his character goes back in time and he like reforms like Scrooge in a Christmas Carol and then he uh, puts money into researching AIDS and then they cure it or something Like, that would have been so much better, and it would have been so much more positive and more satisfying than everybody dies from AIDS. Because after they're done with the serial killer, the whole season that they dealt with, they now have to deal with AIDS. I mean, that was just dumb. And there were just so many things in the finale where they could have done this, they could have done that, like... They set up the whole thing with Plum Island. They never even went to Plum Island or talked about it, really. And uh, there were just so many things they could have done that they didn't. So that was a letdown. Number five is American Horror Story Season 5, Hotel. Wow. (laughs) This finale... You know, this this season, they had too many things going on. They had zombies, they have... Or, did they have zombies? They had vampires, they had ghosts, they had serial killers. They, they just, they have way too much stuff going on all at once. And the finale was kind of like just a bore. It was just a a really, really, like, lame finale. It all centers around how the characters are all going to be ghosts in the hotel and they don't have anything to do. And it's basically like a meta commentary for the writers because the writers don't know what to do and they don't have anything to do themselves because they already uh, resolved everything. And so then they had to resort to bringing back that boring psychic character from season one played by Crybaby, and she has to entertain you for the last couple of minutes. And yeah, what a what a piece of crap. Number four, and see guys, like these finales are bad. Like it was really hard to rank these finales. The only reason why I put Hotel's finale this high is because at least it made more sense than the finales that came before it, like, the, I mean, on this list. You know, it made more sense that, like, there's these ghosts in the hotel, they don't have anything to do for eternity, so we have to find something for them to do. Yeah. <laughs> Number four is American Horror Story Season 4, Freak Show. 
I will give this episode credit. It could have been a great finale. They set up a great finale with, uh, let's see, what was her name? Something Mars. I don't know, uh, Jessica Lang's character, Something Mars. She sold the car, she sold the freak show to Dandy, uh, as payback for the, the freaks turning against her and completely becoming what they were made to be by the townspeople. You know, the whole season was about how we're, we're not really like how people say we are. Wah! And then all of a sudden they become murderous freaks by the end and they completely turn into what they didn't want to be uh, known as. And uh, so she says, fuck you. And she, she sells the freak show to Dandy of all people. And Dandy, I, I mean, we didn't even get to see him perform. The whole excitement of the finale was getting to see him perform in his freak show. And we we didn't even get to see that. It was so disappointing. It was such a huge letdown. It was such a fuck you to the audience. And so then Dandy, he just kills everyone. And I will admit that was pretty satisfying. You know, like I really didn't care at all for these characters. I mean, he was an evil character too. But I mean, so were they. They're just wanting to kill people that they wanted to kill and, and cover everything up because they're mad at everyone. And and then you have Evan Peters' character. The whole season, he was teased at being like the leader of the freaks. And he's going to be their savior and their hero. And he literally doesn't do anything. Uh, and so then, they, a couple of the freaks that are left, they kill Dandy. That's kind of like a drawn out thing. Like, at least they had the villain alive, though. Because... In a lot of these season finales, the villain is actually dead before the finale. And so, at least they kept Dandy alive enough, long enough to kill him. I'll give them that. Other than that, and, and then you have the whole thing with the Jessica Lange's character where you see her in Hollywood. Ew. Uh, and, uh, and that whole stupid story. So yeah, I just hated this finale. Number three, and I know I've, I've really complained this whole video. It's not been very fun because I, I prefer to, to love everything like a fanboy rather than just have to point out all this trash. Number three is American Horror Story Season 8. Is it Season 8? Or, no, it's Season 7. Apocalypse. Ugh. Oh, wait, no, this is season eight. Yeah, it's season eight. Yeah, Apocalypse. I will give Apocalypse credit. They did try to make it like a finale. There was a big battle. You had all the main characters in the show. Uh, you even had Angela Bassett's character came back for no reason at all. She came back and she's like, I am my character and I am the voodoo mama and I'm gonna get you and <laughs> she just gets killed right off the bat but like I they tried at least like it did feel like they kind of tried to make like a climactic finale where they battle against the antichrist but I mean this finale was really hampered by the fact that this season sucked you know it started off with a really interesting premise of where I thought, actually, the first couple of episodes of this season were like a Fallout show. Like, you could have literally put Fallout American Horror Story, and I would have said this is a great adaptation of the video games. Uh, but then they ruined it, and they, they turned it into a season about the witches again. And just everything turned to shit. And so by the end, there was nothing really left to do except for fight Michael. And then, to top that off, after they do the whole time-traveling bullshit, which was just so bizarre, it's like, oh, it really was so easy. 
that you could have just traveled back in time and ran over him like that. <sighs> but after they do that stupid shit, they had probably the worst twist in the history of the show where uh, now the the two young characters that you didn't care about from earlier in the season, they are now alive again. They meet up and they have a child and the child turns out to be the next Antichrist. That twist was so bad. It, it was such a, a, a terrible, terrible idea and it completely, completely just leaves a bad taste in your mouth to where, like, I do not want to watch that season again, ever. Like, I think the only thing that I'll watch from that season is, or, like, the first three episodes, and then the Return to Murder House. Because, like, other than that, the season is such a disappointment. So, number two is American Horror Story Season 7, Cult. Now, this season, as you guys know, I hated it with a passion. Uh, it was such a negative show. It was such an agenda-filled show, too. And uh, the finale, I will give it credit, though. It did do a finale. It did have a climactic finale, where the main villain, uh, what was that guy's name? The uh, uh, Kai Anderson. Kai actually is a pretty cool character in the finale because he is able to manipulate his way out of prison, and I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, but then the way that he gets defeated was really cringeworthy because for the third time, or actually, I didn't even mention... In Apocalypse, they also had Crybaby, and she gets to humiliate the male villain character and, and give the speech to him. Uh, it's just really, really like repetitive of what they do with that actress. Well, they had, they had her do that again in American Horror Story Cult, where uh, she's running for office. She's going to be like a crazy feminazi candidate. And she gets to give this, like, really cringeworthy agenda speech to Kai Anderson where she says, like, uh, you know, I'm a nasty woman and I'm proud of it or something. It's just so, so dated, cringeworthy. It's so, like, you know, like, what are we doing here? Like, and then it turns out that, ironically, after this horrible uh, cult is defeated it turns out that she is actually a part of a cult herself, and it's like a crazy feminazi cult. So, like, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty bizarre. <laughs> but I will give it credit. Like, it was a finale. It was a finale of a show. It was nearly the best finale of the series. Because it felt like a finale. So, number one... Number one is American Horror Story Season 9, 1984. This finale was so good that it actually made me put 1984 as the best season of the series. And that's because this finale sticks the landing. You know, at, there were some things that went wrong through the season. Like, the season wasn't perfect. I, w I did not care for... Uh, the episodes at the beginning, like the second episode, the fourth episode, the fifth one, was not really a big fan of those episodes. But this finale really, really did a good job at concluding the stories that they set up. They had some surprises. I thought it was a really emotional, impactful moment where uh, the son of the, the... What was that guy's name? Mr. Jingles? The son of Mr. Jingles gets to meet him, and he actually protects his son from danger. I thought that that was badass. I thought it was very, very uh, exciting. I thought it was a it was a strong finale. Like this, this finale is the closest thing that this series has ever had to having like a a a great finale. 
And uh, let's see, what else should I say about it? Well, and I also like the thing where they have to keep on killing Richard Ramirez over and over and over again. So the ghosts, they have to guard his, his body because he is so powerful that he's just going to come back to life over and over and over again. I thought that was cool. So yeah, this finale was really, really good. And and it just, it did such a good job at like bringing everything together and completing everything. And uh, so if you want to watch like the perfect season of American Horror Story, I would recommend 1984 because it's the only season where you really feel satisfied at the end. Every single other season ended with me being disappointed. And that's the last thing that you should be at the end of a TV season, especially where it's an anthology and the, the story's not going to continue for the next season because then there's no other chances for the seasons to get any better. I mean, the story, because the story ends, right? So yeah, please like this video and comment and tell me how you would rank the finales because... <laughs> I really don't know. None of them are good except for 1984's finale. So, you know, have fun with that. And then, and then please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more honest videos like this. Goodbye, everybody. See you soon.